Georgi, looking now at yeah. the heavyweight IFAs, oh, uh, you <laughs> have been moderating on this panel. Two of them, IMF and the World Bank, represent the United States of America. I know where you're living. <laughs> Definitely. I know that you yes, know. Yes, <laughs> transparency and corruption, something Georgia must keep an eye on, as stated in Appropriations Bill 2021. Such are the preconditions that this bill sets for Georgia for 15 percent of its support. Yes, Georgia, a very vocal statement, warning, prevention, whatever we call it, from our number one strategic partner that everyone says must be taken seriously. More so that later on new amendments came to the bill, emphasizing even sharper that this committee of Congress means what it states. TI, with its Corruption Perception Index and Corruption Barometer, is undoubtedly number one organization monitoring corruption in the world and here in Georgia. Transparency and corruption, precisely, and so vocally stated um, in these recent uh, years. Uh, what is the reason for that, first of all, and where uh, shall it lead us? That's a very important observation and very important development for, uh, not only for the business environment, but generally for Georgian democracy, uh, because what we're seeing now, it's just a uh, kind of another face or another dimension of that huge attention which we have from our US partners but also uh, that growing concern which we're uh, seeing consistently uh, over the last few months uh, regarding the quality of Georgian democracy, quality of institutions, etc. etc. The business climate is essential for us, especially that we are heading towards post-pandemic economy um, and uncertainty is huge there and we don't know what is waiting ahead. Do you think this uh, um, initiative could have any effect on um, fundraising efforts of the, of the government? The figures of the economic growth or of the economic decline are are quite significant over the last uh, few months and uh, I don't know how it's going to end up in minus four which they have projected uh, and there is a possibility that the government would need some more fundraising and definitely uh, the concerns over uh, corruption is something which the IFIs but also uh, some very important uh, partners of ours are taking uh, kind of very seriously when yes, they're taking decisions on whether to allocate money or not. Yes, yeah, so uh, cap capitalize on um, TI, um, Georgia's efforts in, in fighting and um, making this corrupt deals more, more transparent for the society. What do you see as a trend? We're still good with petty corruption. I mean, good in terms that we, we have almost zero petty corruption, only 1% has has traditionally been saying that they have either encountered themselves or they've known their relatives who have encountered petty corruption. However, when, when it comes to more complex forms of corruption, uh, nepotism or use of the uh, public office in own benefit, there clearly we see growing tendency when people openly state that they, they believe that the majority or the majority of the people believe that the, the public officials are using their positions for their own benefit or the benefit of their uh, political allies uh, and there is impunity when it comes to uh, some political interests or other vested interests connected to the ruling party and their leadership. Uh, so the tendency is, is, is obviously growing. Transparency of public information. This is also one of the uh, focuses uh, mm -hmm. of the bill. What is the tendency there? Well, uh, traditionally we've uh, seen and we know that there are uh, institutions or the ministries which, uh, which don't, are not as public as it is required by law. Also, the tendency which we see is that for some reason, the, 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 either that's because of the lack of ownership or there is something uh, behind that, is that the government does not really push for the agenda of beneficial ownership transparency. So beneficial ownership in, in, in corporate world and in, is, is something which is very, uh, I would say, is essential in terms of transparency now. Uh, 
the government has taken lots of obligations on an international level to, to do that, but unfortunately the, nothing has, uh, has, has changed there. Could we say that private sector is more transparent at this stage uh, than uh, public sector? A, a, a work is underway now to, to produce the uh, business transparency report, basically. That's a, um, that's a report based on the uh, Transparency International's methodology, which is done worldwide, and uh, hopefully this year we'll be able to to publish the first one. Yeah. And then we would have much more informed discussion on that. Yeah, but talking from the Forbes Georgia uh, perspective, we are kind of pulling together some of the um, ratings, uh, trying to um, trying to contribute to, mm -hmm. to transparency. And no, you're uh, doing more, great more, numbers, more numbers are available, um, that's, that's for sure. But of course, there are some gray areas there um, as well. Uh, mm, could you name some of the crucial recommendations that TI, TI Georgia has provided um, during these years and what was the reaction of, of the uh, government? Currently we think that uh, the solution to the many corruption problems which we have in this country is uh, that we don't have a single uh, powerful uh, and dedicated anti-corruption institution in this country. We think that the most applicable examples are from the Baltic uh, countries and Eastern Europe, some of the countries of Eastern Europe, namely Slovenia. And we have come up with a model of, uh, for such, a, uh, such an agency, which obviously we're al always also very uh, negatively looking at and attempts to, to increase bureaucracy and create another agency. But in this case, what we're saying, what we're suggesting is to pull cer certain functions already existing in different agencies under one umbrella and put an unbiased, political, politically unbiased leadership over that agency. Uh, uh, sort of one-stop shop for, for exactly. uh, revealing The one corruption. which will be dedicated and empowered enough to really combat corruption. Another a uh, recommendation of ours is to uh, somehow limit the participation or uh, benefit uh, from the state budget, participation in state procurement and benefits from the state budget and state money for offshore companies. We understand that uh, for some businesses uh, doing investment through offshores might be a useful, uh, useful way of doing business and that's fine for them as long as they invest, obviously. I mean, that's not fine from the transparency point of view, but uh, yeah, what we're saying... Yeah, and offshore is not labeling per se. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying that unless the, we know the beneficial owners, owners of those uh, companies, uh, they should not be uh, participating in state procurement or they should not get any, in any form of uh, any state uh, funding or state state support. Let's hope that this will stay as an initiative and um, appropriation bill won't have to uh, withhold that 15% for, for Yes, Georgia. I hope that definitely that this will be a signal to the decision makers in Georgia that they should change the situation unless they want, would face consequences. And trust me, those consequences would be far beyond that 15%. Thank you so much and thank you for taking our questions. Thank you for having me.